So welcome back here to the LGX Online. It is day three and we do have a tournament coming up for you guys. It is going to be the Clash Royale tournament brought to you guys by 11F. And with that, Nafu, take it away. Hello, I hope you guys can hear me well. Um, I'm super stoked to be back here. Today we will have some amazing games planned. So back again in the grand finals, like for the post esports league, Tortal against Crypto once again. I think these two are the arch nemesis. Like the rivalry goes back already so long. It's crazy. Um, they also had very similar um, results. Um, Total only lost twice against Barry, actually, who's also in this tournament today. Um, and Crypto only lost one time. So pretty similar stats once again. Um, and for the um, third place game, we have Shy Guy. Also, we know him already from the post esports league and OP Barry. Um, Shy Guy lost three 0 to Crypto, so a very hard loss for him. But we will see if he is able to come back and is mentally ready on this stage. So, also for you guys. Um, that's, that the tournament is also sponsored from Essential with a 500 euro prize pool. The winner takes home 250, um, second place 125, third place 75, and fourth place 50. So again, very um, grateful for this. Thank you, Essential. And um, yeah, I really can't wait to see those games. I really can't wait to see those games. Um, we are currently also waiting on Shy Guy, and, uh, but soon we should be able to see the games. Also, the meta at the moment is in a really weird state, so... Ah, and I'm live now on the game. There we go. So we have wall breakers from Barry and the uh, Spear Gobs. So probably Warbreaker minor cycle and oh Goblin Giant double prince probably. Very aggressive play here from Barry. This will be really hard for him to defend. Early night. There the bets. Oh good zap. What has oh the, the prince! The prince connected so early! This is first of all, this is such a hard matchup, yeah. Barry says already good game. I don't know what the miner was, a bit too aggressive. Maybe he thought he could punish him well, but the prince was just too strong. There we see the angry mode from Barry. Oh my god, this will be crazy if he would um, if he was be able to come back. Already 315 on the right tower, 100 1700 on the left tower. And a hard matchup in general. Usually you want to play this matchup really slow and punish over time. Oh! The fireball! I think Barry... I think this game is over already. Oh, ugh. I don't know how he can come back from this. Especially with a slow chip deck like this. It's so hard because he hasn't really a lot of splash for all the spam cards he has. Well, the log is strong, but it's from the recent nerf, not as good as it used to be. The wall breakers got caught up from spear goblins trying to chip away. And I think, no, not yet, but oh, I think that's game over already. I don't know how he can come back. Strong defense though, but as you can see, he's always getting little damage while Barry is nearly getting none damage at all. A good connect, but the thing is, usually these connectors are enough um, when you are able to defend properly. But already after the first push, both towers, one nearly down at all. The other one, oh, such a good fireball again. Oh, the same predict! I was nearly going to say Willy predict this. I thought he would play um, the skeletons. Holy, oh my god. Okay, yeah, that's game over. Barry cannot come back from this. It's not possible. Good predict from Barry as well, but it's just not possible. Super hard matchup for Barry, nonetheless. But you can see um, how far 
Shy Guy is thinking ahead. We had so many beautiful predicts from Shy Guy in this game. It's amazing. This is Crusher on a really high level. I hope you guys all enjoy it. So this was the first game right here. I don't even know what the bands are. Are bands in there? I think probably. Well, by the way, both uh, both sets are uh, best of seven. And I just saw the bands are E Giant and Lava Hound. Probably the band from Barry was a Lava Hound because Shy Guy is a Lava Hound specialist, especially on Leather. He had some crazy results there. And E Giant, a really, really special card, um, super strong, but the cost is just so high. So not so many people are actually playing it. Now we're waiting on the second match. Again, both sets, um, both rounds. So the, for first, third place and first place are best of sevens. So we see a lot of decks, a lot of games. I'm super happy and I can't wait for the next game. Ah, and the first match was won by Shy Guy. Really, really crushing defeat for Barry. And now we're back on the second game. There we go. But again, Shiger had a really, really good matchup, especially after the start. It was not really possible for Barrett to do anything. He was too aggressive. The problem was he was just too aggressive at the start. And again, an aggressive push with the Miner again. Did he even switch the decks? Yes, yes, he did. So we will. We have probably Graveyard. Yeah, typical splash shot from Ibrahim. So Shy Guy and for Barry, oh the Mega Knight spam deck, one of the um, decks I was I I had the most knowledge in, but this is such a hard matchup. This is such a hard matchup, but as you can see the elixir difference. Barry currently has eleven elixir on the field. Shy Guy has none and only five elixir on his hand. But with a good tornado play, he is able to stop every oh. Barry, uh, he, Barry needs to push now. Barry needs to punish him. Is he able to do so? No, not really. Uh, it is it is a little chip damage. It is a little, little chip damage. But this is the problem with, with this deck. The defense can be so cheap and so effective because you don't have a lot of uh, high DPS besides the uh, Inferno Dragon. And with the, when this is countered, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> Both are waiting now. With Graveyard, we really want to play it slow. Um, and for the with the spam deck, you really want to keep up the pressure as much as possible. But you don't want to go on the same lane. On the same lane will be oh oh my god! I thought the, the Inferno Dragon would be actually going on a tower. But wait wait, it connected. He needs to invest the oh there was a lot of damage. I thought he would invest the um, tornado there, but he actually didn't. And now he's very good. Ah, there, there it is. But still not enough, still not enough. Beautiful defense, beautiful defense from Barry here. And he's playing it so well. He's playing it so well at the moment. Keeping up the pressure. Usually you don't want to go same way because in the, the, the thing you want to do is keep up, and make a good defense and then with the defense counter push. Strong, strong tornado there killing everything, but still a little bit of chip. And we have a 300 damage advantage for Barry at the moment. Both are playing it slow, both are playing it safe. This will be really hard. I think this push will decide it. Because if um, Shy Guy is able to get this big, big push, he needs to kill the baby dragon. He needs to kill the baby dragon. Oh, and he's stacking the troops up. He's stacking the troops up, and now the... Oh, no, he has no elixir! The baby dragon was too aggressive. Or oh, was it? He needs to zap this. He needs to zap this. This will go down to the wire. This will go down to the wire. Maybe a minor, aggressive minor. Will it? No, but there's uh, he has the tornado. He has the tornado. Oh, 
This match is so close! He needs to have one good graveyard push. And now probably with the poison he will finish it off. He only needs one skeleton hit, I think. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Ah. Uh, this is this is why you don't want to go same lane, because you push, you you have your offensive, and then the graveyard player can just uh, play so play the defense so strong. And then you saw two ice wizards, two baby dragons, the graveyard, everything on the field. And then with the poison, you couldn't do a lot. Well played from Barry. Well played from Barry. He tried, he tried his best. This is an extremely hard matchup. You can win, of course, but only if the other one has big, big mistakes in his gameplay. And Shy Guy played it really safe. He went only one or twice, a bit too aggressive, and then Barry was able to have, get so much damage. This is only why it was so close. But this is a really hard matchup. This is a really, really hard matchup. So it's two to nothing for um, for Shiga at the moment. Barry is a lot of behind, and I hope his mental state stays strong <sighs> because I know him personally. And he's usually when he's so much behind. Often he will be a little. Uh, frustrated and then maybe plays not so well than he's than he's capable of. Now we have the third game, but but we he can he's such a great player he can do this comeback. I'm 100 percent sure of it. But there's really this the both of these players are so talented. Probably Brit spam from Barry and again the Goblin Giant spam double print deck from Shy Guy. Or oh, is it? Yeah, no, yeah, it's just bridge spam. Oh, is it? Could also be a. Uh, well, of course, it's bridge spam, but I'm I'm wondering which which version it is. By the way, missed fireball there from Ibrahim. The little BM from Barry there. Right. Could this be? No, 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 no. I have no clue what this deck is. I have no clue what this deck is. It's Golem! It's Golem! I was unsure. But this is a really good matchup. This is a really, really good matchup for Barry. He should have this game in his pocket. Now the Golem will explode. The Prince should die. Ooh, good zap. But he's keeping up the pressure. He's keeping up the pressure. What small spell does... Oh, but... Ooh, yeah, it should be... Two hits, two hits, and a mega. Ah, no mega minion hit. And they're equal. They're equal on elixir. So Barry had a really good start there. Hard matchup for Shy Guy there, but not impossible because um, Princess can do so much damage. It's so Barry has to play it slowly and safe. If not, he will get so punished that there you see it. He's trying to avoid the uh, Night Witch. What will, will Barry let the tower fall? What is he doing? What is he doing there? He, what? And now, now everything turned. What was this? And now it's what? What just happened? <laughs> But you can see it's trying. Oh, and the Lumberjack runs in front. This is not good. Good, strong fireball there. Bandit, strong bandit. The bats. Oh, no. He needs to zap it, but then if he zaps it, the. Yeah, the bats will take over. Oh, no. No. What just happened? This is exactly what I mean. Barry needs to play it safe. And not be able to punish, like not get punished. And he, oh my god, I don't, what was it on his hand? So he played the night witch, and his hand was. He should have had the bandit, the zap poison, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. It was a really weird tactic from Barry there. I don't know. Three zero. Wow.
Ibrahim is coming strong. He looks like he's really, really prepared for this match. He wants his prize money. <laughs> Sponsored again by Essential. Thank you for this great opportunity for us here. Wait, best of seven. No, no. One, one more, like, at least one game. One more game, at least. Best of seven goes until the first player has um, four wins. Yeah. Barry asks once again, will he be able to pull off the incredible comeback? We're in game four right now. Oh, I'm, just, oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Even though it looks so good for Ibrahim, nothing is impossible. Minor wall breaker. Oh, the freeze. Perfectly timed, perfectly timed. This could be, this could be Balloon, this could be Graveyard, Freeze. And from Barry, I think it's the first deck, like we saw, it's the first deck from the beginning. Musketeer Night Freeze. Yeah, I think it's, it should be, it should be the... Yeah, looks like Graveyard. Oh, the Barbarians. This will be, once again, an extreme hard matchup for him. Shy guys keeping up the pressure high. Oh, beautiful, beautiful hunter there. Is he able to get one more shot up? Ah, close. This one shot would have made a big difference there. Two, probably three shots. Yeah, three shots from Skull and Dragons. Hard matchup, but it's better than the poison um, with the poison spell. So it's probably building and a graveyard. Again, really aggressive from Barry. But he has the he, he has one AXC more and more damage, so it looks okay for him. He needs to get at least one good punish now. In order to stay safe for the game, in order to take the game. If not, it will be really hard because Shiga can chip over time really well with this deck. Probably Graveyard on the yeah, on the left now, after the hunter was gone. Now probably high bets. Oh, oh with the arrows! But he missed one Spear Goblin! He missed one Spear Goblin! This is huge! Oh! He predicted again the mind by the wild warbreakers! But good, good chip. They will also connect for three hits. Three hits are around 200 damage, if I'm not correct. A bit less. Good miner again. Switching up the places. This is also very important for you guys. Always switch up the miner placement in order to not get predicted. Because you want those three or four hits when you play miner cycle. It looks good for Barry. It looks good. Oh, aggressive. Oh! With a... Oh, very strong! Oh no, the hunter didn't survive! The hunter would have probably turned around. But he's keeping up the pressure. Barry is keeping up the pressure. Oh, no. Six barbarians also on the field. Whew. It will be hard for him to do. Ah, yeah, with the fireball up, so I forgot that. <laughs> Barry is playing it so good. Barry is really playing it so good. Keeping up the pressure. Oh, beautiful! Go! Oh! No, no! What? It's over! It's over! One more fireball! One more fireball! Oh, it's over! It's over! GG! Wow! What a game! This was perfectly played by Barry. It was perfectly played by Barry. Amazing. Even though Ibrahim played it well. Ibrahim played it well. But Barry just had so much pressure all the time. Chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And the thing is, besides the, the knight, he hasn't really good answers for the minor chip. But you can play the Barons, but of course they're really expensive. And afterwards it's really hard to counter push with them properly. So it's 
Three, one for Shy Guy. <sighs> the first set is already crazy. I can't even wait to see the grand final. Oof. Both players are taking their time on um, on choosing their decks. Both players know the stake of this of these games. But of course, for Barry, it's so much harder. He has to win three in a row, in total four in a row, to actually get third place. But if, oh my God, I would scream if he was able to do that. Barry looking for a 1v1 battle and Schalke accepted. So let's spectate this match. Okay. Both players sending out good luck. Spamming the, the love emo. <laughs> Ooh, a really new card. Really interesting as well. Fisher. Could be, could be. Probably Royal Giant. Probably Royal Giant. Oh! I don't know if this was a predict. And Shiger knew what Barry was playing. But this Inferno Dragon was amazing. Oh, Royal Dragon. Oh. Not my favorite card, to be honest. Not my favorite card. But you have to admit, they can be extremely strong. So yeah, we have again... Loon! Okay. Oh no, 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 no! Oh! I don't know how, but... Does he have a snowball? No. Oh my god. Oh uh, no, 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 no. And Barry is laughing. Barry is VMing. This is such a weird deck. This is what I mean. The meta is in such a weird um, spot right now. Oh, this will be really hard. This will be really hard to come back. Mm. Especially with the loon. Like, oh, and the, the Barry need to go back. Oh. And Barry's laughing, Barry's laughing. Shy Guy trying to get as much chip damage as possible for as less, uh, as little like, um, elixir as possible. He's chipping away, he wants this tower. He wants to be safe. Because if he takes away this possibility, uh, Barry needs to only go on the left side, so he cannot double split. Because if Barry was on the right side, he could immediately place his troops into the push of Barry which would be a really big disadvantage for him. Maybe Fireball? No. Maybe the Ken card even survives? No, no, no. Barry is playing a little aggressive here. He's in a really tight spot. Yeah, only... Oh, but maybe, maybe. He's going in strong, he's going in strong! The cannon card is connected! The cannon card is connected! No, he... No! No, he missed it! He missed it! No! Oh, but it wouldn't have changed anything. It would not have changed anything. Oh! So... Oh my god. What an end. What an end. Shy Guy goes for the... He took it all. 75 euros for 75 euros for him. 4-1. Really well played. We saw a lot of decks. I'm just checking in real quick. So we had Loon. We had Graveyard again. We had such a variety of decks. Barry actually nearly always played the, the minor. Besides the Golem match, he always played the Miner. One of his favorite cards, of course. Um, what an amazing game. Both players um, typing in the chat, GG. And well, now we can only wait for the Grand Finals, the big event for this Clash Royale tournament. I give it back to you, Tyler. Thank you. 
Yeah, thanks a lot for that. I mean, really, really exciting there. Both players certainly going head to head. Shy Guy had the lead going forward most of the time. And of course, well, his opponent did try to get back at him, but it just did not work out. As far as I know, we do still have Shy Guy coming in for an interview. So, of course, we're going to head to a short little break and then we'll be back with Nafu and Shy Guy with that interview. So, we'll see you on the other side. So welcome back. Of course, as promised, before we headed into the break, we do still have Nafu and Shy Guy there for the interview. And without further ado, congrats to Shy Guy and Nafu. Have fun with the interview. Thank you, Tyler. Um, on Shy Guy's behalf, we will do the interview in German because he feels better talking in it. So I will switch now. Um, congratulations, Shy Guy, nochmal. Ähm, Hammer gespielt, super spannende Games. Ähm, wie fühlst du dich eigentlich gerade? Ja, ich fühle mich gut, Mann. Ich fühle mich gut. Der dritte Platz. Leider habe ich ja gestern gegen Crypto 3-0 verloren, ja. was auch mit dem Matchups zusammenhing. Aber er hat doch sehr, sehr gut gespielt, muss man ihm lassen. Und äh, ich fühle mich jetzt echt wirklich gut. Ich habe ja den, äh, meinen Vorsprung sogar ausgebaut, mhm. mit einem 3-0 sogar. Ja. Dann habe ich mich recht confident gefühlt, dass ich das Ding nach Hause hole. Ja, also 3-0 zurückzukommen, also vier Games in a row zu gewinnen, wird super schwer für jeden. Ähm, hast du super gemacht, sehr starke Deckauswahl, vor allen Dingen super Predicts teilweise in deinen Games. Ähm, vor allen Dingen ähm, bei dem allerersten Game hast du so viele Zap Predicts und Feuerball Predicts gemacht. War das einfach ein bisschen random oder wusstest du ganz, also hast du komplett Kontrolle über das Game? Also ich wusste, ich wusste, woher die Sachen hin sind. Er hätte ja auch nicht viel Möglichkeiten, sage ich mal, nee, weil nee. das Game hat das schon mal sehr gut angefangen für mich. Ich war schon im Damage Lead und da habe ich ja. nicht mehr viel Spielraum gelassen, wo er die Karten sit äh, setzen soll und so. Und äh, gegen Ende hin war das eigentlich nur runterspielen und die Predicts waren eigentlich recht äh, voraussehbar, sage ich mal. Ja. Und äh, ich würde sagen, es war schon kontrolliert, ja. Da hast ja, hast du sehr solide runtergespielt. Dein Lead 3-0 hast du stark behalten. Ähm, wie war es eigentlich deine Vorbereitung überhaupt? Wie, wie groß ist ungefähr dein Deckpool gewesen? Ähm, wie lange hast du trainiert? Also ich habe jetzt nicht lange trainiert. Also ich habe ja. natürlich vor dem ganzen Turnier ein bisschen mit äh, Kollegen auf anderen Accounts, die, die man von mir nicht kennt, ein paar andere ja. Decks gespielt. Aber jetzt zu sagen, äh, ich sag mal so, vielleicht ein bis eineinhalb Stunden. Mhm. Aber jetzt speziell für dieses Bio 7, also für, die, für das Spiel um Platz 2 gegen Barry, habe ich mich jetzt vielleicht zehn Minuten vorbereitet, weil ich, die Zeit war relativ knapp und so. Ja. Und ich konnte leider davor nicht. Aber ging ja alles zum Glück gut aus. Ja, also auf jeden Fall sehr confident von dir. <lacht> ähm, hast du, wie gesagt, nochmal sehr gut gespielt. Die Games waren super interessant zuzuschauen. Vor allem war auch für mich super interessant zum Casten. Ähm, was hältst du eigentlich von Barrys Deck aus? Er ist ja meistens beim, bei Miner geblieben, bei dem Golem-Matchup war er eigentlich super im Voraus, ist eigentlich ein sehr schweres Matchup für dich, aber du hast ihn so gut gepunished. Was, was denkst du, ist bei Barry eigentlich so ein bisschen schief gelaufen? Also das äh, Ding mal, die Bands, die haben wir ja erstmal mhm. gemacht, mhm. er hat Lava und gebannt, weil ich ja Lava und Mage Ja, auf, auf Leather rasierst du da gefühlt alles. Ja. Und ich wusste, dass Barry sehr, sehr gut mit meiner ist. Mhm. Aber ich habe mir, ich habe nicht meiner gebannt, ich bin ruhig geblieben, ich habe Elektro Giant gebannt, damit ich schon mal die nervige Karte raus habe. Ja, und viele dann, wusste Leute ich, er, auf. dann wusste ich, dass er meiner spielen wird wiederum, mehrmals. Und deswegen habe ich auch so Decks gespielt wie dieses Goblin Giant Deck, weißt du, mit mhm. zwei, drei Spells oder so. Ja. Dass ich Matchup habe, den Matchup Advantage sozusagen. Mhm. Und äh, ich habe auch mit dem Band so ein bisschen so gespielt und dann die Decks sozusagen von ihm predicted. So, ja. Und. Das mit dem Golem, das, äh, er war halt in Führung. Mhm. Und dann wusste ich, wenn er eine Night Witch hinten sitzt, also er hatte ja. die Nachtexte da hinten, ja. hinten sitzt, da habe ich auf der anderen Seite bin ich schnell rein, weil er nicht, keine Antwort dagegen hatte. Ja. Sozusagen. Das hat es eigentlich ausgemacht. Ja, also das Matchup ist eigentlich sehr gut für Barry gewesen. Nur er muss es halt, also es ist sehr schwer in der Single Exit Time. Da kannst du ihn sehr gut punishen eigentlich. Ich dachte, um ehrlich zu sein, er hätte das Game schon in der Tasche gehabt. Aber dann hast du ihn da so gut ähm, gepunished bekommen. Also hast du wirklich auch die, die, das taktische Spiel, viele Leute unterschätzen ja oft, ähm, wie viel Ausmaß ähm, die Deckauswahl hat in Clash Royale, wie, wie weit man da teilweise vorausdenken muss. Und da hast du wirklich auch strategisch super gedacht. Vielen Dank, vielen Dank. Ähm, ja, sonst vielleicht noch etwas, was du generell über das Turnier sagen möchtest. Also ich fand so. das Turnier auf jeden Fall gut organisiert. Mhm. Hat mir auf jeden Fall viel Spaß gemacht mit, einem, mit guten Kommentatoren. 
Das Stream habt ja auch flüssig. Und ich, recht, ich bin recht zufrieden. Und auch hoffentlich nächstes Mal bin ich dann auch dabei, wenn es in, in die nächste Party gibt. Ja, hoffe ich auch, dich hier wiederzusehen. Von dir gibt es immer super Gameplay. Ähm, okay. Und ich denke, für das Interview war es das. Ich bedanke mich nochmal, dass du dabei warst und die Fragen beantwortet war, hast. Vielen Dank. Ähm, Dank Feier schön Dank. deinen Sieg. Dritter Platz. Etwas, worauf man stolz sein kann. Und ja, schönen Tag noch. Dir auch, ne? Danke. Ciao. Schönen Tag noch. And now we would we I'll give it back to you, Tyler. All right. Thanks a lot there. Yeah. Nice to always have the player's side of the story as well to see how they kind of prepared into it. Sometimes just kind of take it as they go. So, of course, we will still have that grand final coming up. As far as I know, the players are not ready just yet. So we will be heading to a short little break and then we'll be there with that game as soon as all the players are ready. So stick with us here at the LGX Online. It is day three. It is almost the end of our day. And with that, that grand final is going to be coming up. See you then. Okay, then, of course, we do still have that grand final as promised before the break. It should be pretty interesting. It is going to be another best of seven. I'd, I'd say without further ado, the players are ready. Nafu, take it away. Thank you, Tyler. So now the grand finals, Cryptos are already asking for the battle. Um, the bands are Miner and Lava Hound. So pretty similar um, bands than before. Um, I know that Portal was playing a lot of Royal Giants for the qualifiers. Um, so maybe we'll see some today. Crypto is a mysterium, like always. His deck pool is so large. It's incredible. And again, both players here in the finals. The same like um, for the same for the for the post esports league. Players asking also if they should accept. Yes, guys, you can accept. No worries. We are ready for your amazing gameplay. And here we are in the first game. Portal playing with the Trainer Hannes account and OP Crypto, of course, representing Outplay here in this tournament. Is he a oh, okay? Early start there, little chip damage, cage. Maybe Royal Giant. Oh, strong, con strong King Tower activation there. Looks like very similar decks. Oh! But beautiful, beautiful fireball there. Probably Royal Giant versus Royal Giant. Maybe a little different. Maybe the... Oh no, Royal Hawks! Royal Hawks, actually. So, uh, probably mirror match. Well, could, could still be Royal Giant. Could also be Royal Hawks versus Royal Hawks. And once again, like in the post esports league, very similar decks for those two players, and probably a mirror match. Probably a mirror match right there. But you cannot forget that Crypto has a big advantage um, with the King Tower activated. This makes such a big difference. And already a thousand damage on the right tower. Those Zeppies did some good work there. Ooh, a little fail. For Baron Battle, a bit too too late there. But no big deal, no big deal. Crypto had a solid defense, good fireball. He has no oh! He has no he has no elixir! This oh this will probably be tower! This will probably be this tower! Already! Crypto showing off the dominance right there! This is all with the start. In the mirror matches, most of the time, the start will make the big difference. And there, with the King Tower um, activation, the strong fireballs, the early damage, maybe fireball again right there. No, he keeps the fireball for late. Oh, no. In the end, he played it anyway. No, but this looks really, really solid for Crypto. Still 1,700 damage. HP left on his right tower. Oh, maybe not a mirror match after all. Oh, 
I didn't say anything. This is what I mean. The decks are so weird. The decks are so weird. Good fireball, but it won't change anything. Crypto takes the third game. Solid there. He's seeking revenge. He got over. He got. Um, he got beaten by Torto last time when they met in the grand finals. The little BM predict fireball there. Total beat um, Crypto the last time they met, but now Crypto is he's seeking revenge. He tasted blood now, and now he wants more. Now he's going for the kill. Super strong play from Crypto there. Really amazing. Both played the same decks, and Crypto showed the dom dominance. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> now we're waiting on for the second match. And I don't know. What do you guys think actually in the chat? Type it in who you guys think will win. Um on how much the score will be. Will it be 4-2 for crypto? Maybe will it go to the wire and a 4-3 for some of them? Or maybe somebody will do the sweep, the gentleman sweep. Tell us in the comments what do you guys think? Who will take this grand finals right here? Both players taking their time on choosing their decks. Crypto is a player who always thinks a lot about his deck picks because they have such a, they make such a big difference. A good ah now we're in the second match. A deck pick can make it all like can change the game completely. Even one card sometimes, even one card can change the game completely. Both players waiting now, playing it slowly, but Crypto cycling the two Skeleton Dragons in the back. The Baron Barrel from um, Tortal. Again, both with the Snowball. Um, what could this... So, this could be Graveyard? I know a graveyard version with Prince and um, Earthquake, but I don't know if this could still get played. Royal Cruz again. Maybe the, the, the Loon deck. Shiger actually played before. Zeppis from Tortal. I don't know. I really don't know what this deck is. Could be. Oh, now Turtle, uh, Crypto is going in strong. Oh, but beautiful defense. Beautiful defense there. And the Loon, yeah. But if the Zeppies, oh yeah, the Zeppies lock on differently. So they stun at um, different points. So no Loon connection, not even a Death Bomb. And now um, Turtle is punishing back. Oh, and the Zeppi stun. The Zeppi stun! Oh, and it even charged! It even charged at the end! It was so close! Ooh, this gotta hurt. This gotta hurt a lot. Especially the two and a half elixir disadvantage for crypto. But this doesn't mean anything. Two elixir can be outplayed easily with a good defense. I still I'm still not sure about the win condition there. I don't know. Poison? What could... Ooh, strong, strong defense. Maybe with a... No, 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 nothing would... No, no, no. The Zeppies are just too strong. The Zeppies are just too strong. Good fisherman there. Who should clear up everything. What a game! What a game! Both players have played their defense so well. Only damage made on Total Tower is around 100. For Crypto, only 200. So everything is still open already. Three minutes played. Only two minutes left. Strong, strong offense. Maybe with a good snowball. No, but the hunter, the hunter. Yeah. Oh, the defense is just so good. I don't know how Crypto is managing. Well, wants to go through there. Smart decision protecting the fisherman there and the musketeer now. Oh, 
but the fisherman pulled it back so that Musk actually got hit with the splash. I don't know if the fishermen did more, uh, more bad than good actually there. Worse than good. What is this wind condition? Is that it? Is that just double, double prince spam spell cycle? No. Maybe... The graveyard could make sense there. I know Portal played some graveyard prince decks in the past. Maybe some... No, no, no. I mean, giant? I really don't know. I really don't know. But again, both players are playing. Oh, and now we're reaching Triple Elixir. And now, now it will come to the end. Now we will decide. I don't even know. No, there will not be any draw. There will not be any draw. But I don't know if it's such a smart idea to go on the left side tower. Oh, no, the connect! The connect! This is what I meant on the right side tower. He had already 500 damage dealt. And now it's looking good for the portal. He will win in overtime. He needs to push now. Somehow needs to get the damage in. Maybe he's pushing in strong. He's pushing in strong. Oh, no. Crypto did not just do that. He's actually... Oh my god! How close was this? What? What? Oh my god! I did not think he could pull it off! Wow! What a game! Such good defense from both of these players. And then Crypto just overrun Tortle with his Lumberjacks, with the Musketeers, with the Loon. And then everything in the range just completely ran him over. Wow. 2-0 now for Crypto. A very strong lead. Like I said, he's coming from revenge. But you cannot underestimate Tortle. If you will, you will lose. 100%. Because he's such, such a great player with so big experience. They just went into game three. There we go. Man, I thought already Barry and Shy Guys games were, were were stunning. Again, this beautiful connection. Why is Tortle? Why is he keeping on doing this? I don't know. Beautiful fireball. Again, such a good lead for Crypto there with the activated King Tower. Oh, beautiful Bob, bro. Beautiful Bob, bro. Magic Archer for Tortle. Also, really well timed um, Bob Barrel there. It's actually really tricky to time that Bob Barrel correctly against the. Uh, there we see Brit Spam. Against the uh, Cam card. I, I, I was so often so frustrated when I missed that timing. Like, I know the pain. <laughs> Beautiful defense, beautiful defense there. The Mega Minion is coming back. And it looks like Graveyard. Graveyard Fireball with the Archers. But again, good defense for Crypto, uh, for Tortle. Neck and neck. These games are crazy. Neck and neck. But if I'm correct, and Crypto is actually playing Graveyard with Fireball, um, he will have a slight advantage over Brit Spam. Especially because of the Bomb Tower. The Bomb Tower is such a great force on the defense. Especially if you only have the, the Battle Ram. Beautiful Knight there. Killed the Magic Archer first and now killing the Royal Ghost. 200 damage on the left side. 100 damage on the left side for Crypto as well. Oh, he punished the Mega Minion. But the amazing cannon guard using all three towers so the cannon guard is not dying there. Bit too early magic archer, I would say. Yeah, a bit. Oh, the fireball was too much. Yeah, and he, he's saying the oops, the fireball was too much there. Maybe he wanted to play some archers instead of the fireball, like at the bridge. Happened to me also multiple times. 
Oh, but strong defense. Strong defense. But Portal is keeping up the pressure. Portal is keeping up the pressure. And there's no proper opening for Crypto. But, as you can see, Portal has no big spell. So in the end, it could come down to the right hand, only like two or 300 HP, and then the fireball will make the big difference. So Tortle really needs that one big push. If not, he will lose this game. He needs that one big opening. Chipping away will not work for him because um, Crypto has the better, best, yeah, like I said, there's a great up. Has the better uh, opportunities to get the damage tower. Added, to get the damage to the tower. <laughs> Again, 200, 300 damage there on the right side. The late night, so the cannon card crosses the river. Nicely. Oh, and the predict on the magic archer. The predict on the magic archer. Beautiful play. Didn't work 100% because the magic archer is still alive. But um, he still had to. Oh, but now he's get. Oh, so much. Woo! The bandit connected. This is what I mean. He needs that one big connect. He needs that one big connect. But Graveyard, especially in the um, 3 elixir time, can be so strong. But the same for Britsman. For example, especially the cycles, we really achieve. Yeah, it's okay to lead, let get um, a little damage on the left side. And now he goes in. Now he goes in with the Graveyard. He has another elixir for the bomb tower, so the Bevaram he, he doesn't need to care. And a lot of damage! And the Mega Minion is even connecting! What?! So, Crypto has little luck in this game. Like, these hits were so bad. <laughs> no, but, um, oh my god, what a game. What a game. But on the low... Nah, this, this should be fine. Yeah, this should be fine. This is in this, this game. The third game as well is in his bag. Yeah. The skeletons will connect. The fireball should be enough. 2 HP, will it at least get the tower normally? No, with the tiebreaker. 2 HP left, and Crypto will win with the tiebreaker. Wow, what a game. Whew, holy moly. Oh, I, I was a little scared for Crypto one moment. Because Total, Total did the pressure so well. Like, just continuous and continuous and continuous pressure. Didn't give him one single opening. And then he accepted a little damage, played a really good knight, going on the left while still taking up the damage from the Magic Archer, if I'm correct, and then punishing Tortal with those both troops, with both of these troops, especially because of the Battle Ram. The Battle Ram of Tortal was too much. Already in the fourth game, this might be it. This might be it. This is maybe our last game for today, guys. Turtle up 3-0. 3-0. Uh, crypto up 3-0. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited I can't even I can't even speak properly anymore. I'm sorry for that guys. Fisherman, baby dragon, maybe you. Maybe Royal Giant from Crypto could be the same deck like in the uh, could be the same deck like in the first game. The Royal Recruit, um, the Royal Recruit Hog deck. Nah. Oh no, Brit Spam. Yeah, Brit Spam with the. Um, uh, how do you say it again in English? Wiederreiterin. Oh man, I can't recall the name. Hog Rider and... Ah, it doesn't even matter. Good defense there from Crypto, by the way. And yes, it's the same deck like in the first game, playing Royal Hawks. Now I'm wondering if the um, Turtle has a building. If not, this will be extremely hard if he has one. This will be a really, really interesting match, which will go again down to the wire, like all the others before. Oh, but good 
Oh, so much damage from the flying machine. So much damage from the flying machine. Oh, and then... Oh. Oh my god. Nice. Use of the electric spirit. Pekka! Pekka bridge spam. This will be hard. This will be hard for Tortle. Especially with the big lead Crypto already has. Especially with this big lead. The baby dragon could be troubling for him because he doesn't really have a lot of air damage. Good poison there. Really good poison there. And now, oh, but beautiful recruits. Does he have anything? Oh, the last second cage, the last second cage, no damage taken. Oh my god, but um, Tortle has such a big uh, Alexia advantage. But he's going in strong. Crypto's going in strong now. With a flying machine there. Oh, this is so much damage! It's so much damage! Oh, but wasn't this a little too aggressive? Wasn't this a little too aggressive? I don't know. Has he enough for the Pekka? Has he enough for the Pekka? Only 300 damage left. This is still possible for, for Crypto. Uh, for Torton to actually come back because this predict was beautiful! The Pekka is still alive but should die. Oh, he, he doesn't give it. He's not, he doesn't take care. Oh! This is what I mean, he was too aggressive! He was too aggressive, Fireball isn't enough! If I'm correct, Fireball isn't enough! Or is it? Oh, it actually is! I'm sorry! What?! <laughs> and the VM from Crypto, oh my god, it was so close at the end! The complete sweep! The complete sweep! What?! What a set! What a final! Wow! <laughs> crypto typing in GG's for crypto. Let's go. This were these were some amazing games. I had so much fun right now just commentating and just watching it because the level of both of these players is so good. I this is exactly why these two players are coming back to the finals every single time. Because they give it all on the field and just perform like beasts. Like completely unhuman people. The plays, the predictions, the deck picking, just amazing. So Crypto actually managed to win 4-0. If I'm correct, we will take a short break now. So I'll give it back to you, Tyler, and afterwards the interview. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, great excitement there for the grand final of Clash Royale. And with that, I mean... Pretty much you carried the hype there through. It was great to watch as the last game did go to a little bit of an extension. But after all, grand final was won by Crypto. As I said, 4-0. Hoped for a little bit of a tighter game, to be honest. But uh, definitely a good sweep there. And we're, we're going to head to a quick break. Until then, Crypto is going to be joining us here for a quick little interview with Nafu. So see you then. So welcome back from that break, of course, as promised before we went into it, we do have our Clash Royale champion, Crypto, joining Nafu now for the interview. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you for the introduction. Congratulations, Crypto. Holy moly. What was <laughs> this? Thanks Man. a lot. Thanks a lot. The games were incredible, especially at the end. You didn't even play no more defense. You just went in for the kill. Yeah, to be honest, at the end, I was a bit greedy. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was a little mistake I did, but I knew that he didn't have Dark Winds in cycle and just needed to cycle the, the World Hawks. But yeah. to be honest, yeah, it was a kind of mistake. But in the end, it did work. So I would say we're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel? I would say really great, especially after the, you took your revenge on Turtle. Um, I will say, like, I was a bit stressful, um, mm -hmm. but I kind of know how to deal with pressure, but I'm not used to it, you know? I mean, you can learn how to deal with it, but you mm -hmm. are not, I mean, you cannot be used to it mm -hmm. because that's just such a, such a high pressure. And yeah, yeah so I was shaking. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, I was shaking. And the thing is, I'm actually in Portugal and the uh, internet here is not very good. So oh, I was hoping true. everything <laughs> will go fine. But luckily, uh, I didn't have any lags. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I can imagine, especially how close the game were, the games were, especially sometimes it took like four, four or five minutes to even like four minutes. So something even happened, especially on the on the graveyard was the bridge band match. He had the yep. advantage for you um, against you. He had like I think a thousand or like 900 damage more, and then you, oh, you played so well defense, and then you took the defense on the offense, and then you finished the game off with two HP on his left tower. How was the feeling there? Wasn't it? Uh, a lot of relief? <laughs> I knew, like I knew, I needed to defend until triple elixir because Grave was just uh, so strong in triple mm -hmm. elixir, and I also knew that I not have a lot against bridge spam. Like I have some things, but if he plays. Bandit on the beach on the right moment, mm -hmm. and I don't have any ground units. Uh, she will just charge on the yeah. tower, and that's actually what happened there. Exactly, I had yeah. cannon cut, but cannon cut actually cost five elixir. That's mm -hmm. a lot, and that's why she dashed. But I did actually an okay defense, I guess, yeah. and did uh, come back at triple elixir like expected. I actually mm -hmm. knew I will win that, and I had fireball in the deck because actually. Uh, with an analyst, we kind of scout thought a little bit, and we know <laughs> that he plays a lot of uh, mm -hmm. fireball bait decks yeah. like Wallhawks and stuff like this. So I guess I had uh, pretty good matchups, but uh, I prepared for it. So, yeah. Yeah, so this was actually my second question um, on how much you prepared, but you kind of answered already. So with a lot of thought, you went into this finals. Um, how was the feeling to, to actually finally... Get this over with because you guys are meeting how long again is, isn't this like the fifth or sixth time you two are meeting in the finals um like we met a few times not always in the final but actually in the finals <laughs> trained spring games post esport league and now so okay. i actually managed to win two times and he managed to win actually on the post esport league so mm -hmm. yeah i took my revenge yeah probably a good feeling for you now Yeah. And um, so, what we can, what can we expect for you in the future? Actually, um, <laughs> actually, we'll start streaming. So in January, uh, probably or February. Um, but I will definitely keep the good work uh, going. And with the competitions, uh, actually, my goal is to win the next post esports league. Okay. Uh, and maybe to sweep in the finals, like I did today, and to show actually. Uh, what I'm made of and mm -hmm. how I can good perform under pressure and yeah. not like in the post season league final. So, yeah, I kind of showed it today, so I'm kind of happy. No, also when you look at the bracket, you only lost one single game. Yeah, but, and one but, single uh, tower, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, doing the world mm -hmm. uh, group, uh, doing the world tournament, like, except the bracket, I only played Ewom because there were... A few players who actually don't know how to defend against yeah. it, and I don't want it to show my decks actually. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I only lost against one uh, player, and the match was even close. So yeah. Thank you for your time, Crypto. As you can see, a really thoughtful player there, really strategic, being prepared for every single situation. Thank you again. I hope you will enjoy your prize money. And yeah, definitely. <laughs> back to you, Tyler. Thank you. All right, big thanks there to Napu, of course, also for taking care of the commentary here for the Clash Royale tournament. And big congrats to all the players that participated and took home a little bit of that prize pool.